Good morning, everyone. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the sunshine this morning. And thank you that we can be here together despite everything that's happening with COVID. Father, I pray that you would help us to uh, learn from your word now. Uh, help me to speak words that glorify your name. And we pray all this in your name. Amen. Now, this is my first time preaching here at All Saints, so I'm going to warn you now. I do tend to be quite interactive. So be ready. I will not make you stand up today. I will not make you do any cool dance moves, but you must be ready to put hands up or down. Okay? Yes or no? Thank you. You can use your voices. <laughs> All right. Now, here is the first question that will hopefully work. Please work. No? Ha ha. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Now, this also goes for everybody who is online too, and you can put your hand up and not be embarrassed, unlike some people who might feel nervous about doing it here in person. So, here the first question, only put your hand up if the answer is no. All right. Have you ever had doubts about whether Jesus was real or not? Ooh. All the Charlies are putting their hands up. Woohoo! Cool. Fantastic. I'm pretty sure most people, though, will have had a few doubts. And the passage that we read earlier uh, about Jesus' disciples and Thomas, who you know specialises there, is basically about the disciples responding straight after Jesus has died and in the week following. Last week, we got to celebrate Easter. We've still got the lovely cross there. And as Charlie mentioned, uh, for many of the East, uh, Eastern Orthodox Church, they're celebrating Easter right now. Not only do we get a lovely four-day weekend, but across the world, we are remembering how Jesus died, but also his resurrection and celebrating his death, as, death and resurrection as the Son of God. And by celebrating, we're acknowledging just how central and how important Jesus is to the Christian faith. So I'm quite new here. My family and I, uh, you might have seen the really small cute girl in pink running around, but we have only been here since the beginning of January. Many of you are yet to talk to me very much that's okay. And I know I'm still trying to learn everyone's names and don't worry if you can't pronounce mine. It always takes a bit of time, especially when there's two X's, right, in my name. So I thought I would actually share a little bit of my story, which seems to fit very well with today's passage. Here we go. Yeah, it worked. So I was the first Christian in my family. And at the age of 16, I was actually diagnosed with a brain tumour in my pineal gland. This tumour had been growing gradually, and without anyone really noticing what was happening, it had actually been affecting my vision, my balance, and been bal uh, blocking the spinal fluid uh, down my spine. So I was immediately booked in for major brain surgery, and while the surgery was a success by medical terms, following it, I actually had meningitis, uh, which is an infection of the brain lining. I had a seizure, which meant that I couldn't actually walk. Um, and lots of other really just scary things going on. It was a really terrible time with so many unknowns. All the adults around me, my parents, my teachers, my friends as well, didn't seem to know what was really happening, didn't seem to know what we should be doing, or how to fix it. While I was stuck in, the ho in a hospital bed at St. Vincent's Hospital, that's right, St. Vincent's in Melbourne, I saw a cross on the wall, pretty much like that cross behind you. At this point, I knew I didn't know what I was doing. I was feeling very scared, very unsure, and I just 
I didn't know where to go. I couldn't walk anymore. And it became clear that, yeah, none of the doctors really knew what they were doing either. So when I saw that cross, I got really angry at God. I was feeling pretty angry, pretty desperate and very scared, a little bit like Thomas, who was feeling pretty desperate, very scared, with so many unknowns. After all, the guy that he had been following for the last three years, who he knew was the Messiah, had just died. That wasn't his plan. That wasn't how it was supposed to go. So like Thomas, I said something not very respectful, not very trusting, and said, well, if you're really God, then heal me. Prove it. That sounds a little bit like something that Thomas said, doesn't it? Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Okay, so here we go. Time for question number two. This time I need you to put your hands up if it's a yes. I'm still expecting you at home to be doing that too. Question number two. Have you ever heard of Thomas, Jesus' disciple? And have you heard this passage preached on before? It goes, yep, okay, lots of hands. Today's reading shows us the response of the disciples on the same day Jesus was re resurrected and Thomas's response a week later. My first question, have you ever had any doubts about Jesus being real, shouldn't really surprise you then. After all, even in the English language, we have a phrase, doubting Thomas. I've heard sermons where they encourage us and go, you know, don't be a doubting Thomas. I've also heard sermons where they say, it's okay to have doubts. You know, Thomas, the disciple who followed Jesus around for three years, he had doubts too. And it's important to acknowledge, yeah, we do have doubts sometimes. And both these responses to the passage are perfectly appropriate and in many ways really helpful. But today, I thought I'd focus on something different, which I think is very applicable to all of us here. Okay, now I'm on to that third question. Does anyone here have a time machine? Oh, oh, Mark might. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you only put a hand up if it's a yes. Can you time travel? No, no. Whew. Okay. Oh, oh, my Charlie is saying he can apparently. <laughs> okay, okay. Why am I asking this question? Well, today, instead of focusing in on Thomas, I want to focus in on the sections that we read around him. Let's read them again. Hold on, I can make you work. There we go. On the evening of that first day, so this is verse 19, of that first, sorry, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Okay, so that's the bit before we get to Thomas. Here's the verse up on the screen after the Thomas bit. So then Jesus said to them, to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I wanted to focus on these two sections because as I have just confirmed, Mark, okay, none of us actually have a time machine. None of us can actually go back in time, stick our hands into Jesus' side or see the nail marks on his hands. So whether you like it or not, you can only ever be counted in the group 
of people that Jesus describes in verse 29. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Whether you like it or not, we have just celebrated Easter, and some people are still celebrating Easter, because while the death of Jesus in our place was enough to save every person on, in the world, he didn't need to do it again and again to prove it to you. He needed only, as the Messiah, the Son of God, the only perfect, sinless person, human being in the world, to do it once. That was enough. In fact, in Hebrews, it tells us, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets in many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom all, oh, also he made the universe. And in verse 10, uh, sorry, chapter 10, verse 10 of Hebrews, the same book from the section I just read. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ, once for all. So, while Thomas had the, um, the honour of sticking his hand into Jesus' side, I still think even though he was, like, resurrected, it still would have been kind of gross to do that. Um, Thomas was then able to testify and witness to others and say, yes, I saw him. You may not have seen him, but I, Thomas, did. And that's what the Bible is, right? A book where all the testimonies of Jesus by people who actually saw him when he was right there are written. Okay, so what? What does that mean for the people with no time machines, everyone here in this, in this room? So this is the part where we return to my story. Three months after my surgery... I was informed by the doctors that I would need further treatment, which would include radiotherapy, and there, would there was a possibility that I wouldn't be able to have children. At the age of 16, this meant that my vague plans of getting a job, getting married, one day having a family, were pretty much stuffed. The funny thing was that when they did another MRI, the remaining tumour, which the surgeons knew they had left in there, had disappeared. This was huge. God had healed me. And I went to church and I heard for the first time in detail about who this Jesus guy was and what he had done for me. Now, it would be logical for all of us to think that this part of my life was the main event. That's it. This is the most important part of my life. We can focus in on it. And please don't mistake me, I have had the privilege of sharing my testimony many times where it was the focus. For me, though, this wasn't the end of the story. Just like this section of the Bible that we've read today, Thomas seems to be the main focus. But I think it's only one of the important things. Many years later, and many times following, people would say to me, Oh, you're special. You have proof that Jesus is real. We have proof here, though, in the Bible that we're reading and in the people that we're meeting here in this building on this Sunday morning that have had God working in their lives in various ways. Not only that, but we can then indeed understand, just as I told a friend who was looking into Jesus, who said to me, but I have no cool story to share like you, Shashi. My response is, yeah, because you were smart enough to listen to the testimony of others. You were smart enough to actually read the Bible. You didn't have to have a brain tumour to make you listen. We in this room today can be the ones who have not seen but have believed. We can be those blessed ones. So my encouragement for you today, my challenge as well, for, for those of us who have doubts, who also don't have time machines, so we can go back in time and stick our hands into Jesus' resurrected body, please listen and read. Open that Bible. Talk to some of those you know are Jesus believers here in this room today. 
understand why they believe. For those of us who are already believers, this helps give us encouragement and it helps us understand indeed the last part of this passage that we read, the purpose of John's Gospel. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Please understand, doubts are totally normal, to be expected. But all you have to do is talk to some of the people around you. You'll hear their testimony of how Jesus and how God has been working in their lives. Please go pick up one of those red books in the pews so you can hear firsthand from the guys who were there with him who Jesus was. And for those who do believe, please be encouraged that while we will always have doubt sometimes, indeed we are counted among those who have not seen but yet have believed. So now we're going to sing a song. I think it's a relatively new one and hopefully the lyrics will encourage you to have faith, to believe and to be an encouragement to one another. Let's sing. (laughs) 